A conical section fabricated in a wall has a diameter of D is equal to AX. Show an expression for temperature in terms of T and X values only. So we're given a diagram here, as well as some additional information. So firstly, the conical section that we're looking at in the wall has Q on the right-hand side coming through, the heat flows through it, with temperature 1 on the left, on, sorry, on the right, and temperature 2 on the left, with X1 and X2 on the right and the left, respectively. So further down in the question, they actually give us values for A, T1, X1, T2, X2, and K. So let's just write these quickly in here. K is equal to 3.46. So I'm not going to write the units because we're running out of space. T1 on the left is 600 Kelvin. So this is the hot side. The cold side goes through to 400 Kelvin. X1 is at 50 millimeters. And X2 is at 250 millimeters. So what we mean with this conical section is if we had to extend it theoretically back down at the point naught, at x equals naught, it would get to a point, which we, sorry, a single sharp point. So we're only going to be looking from x1 to x2 from 50 to 500. So the first part of this question is simply show an expression for the temperature of this, given that the diameter of this is a multiplied by x. So the diameter, so that means this is a circle, is a is equal to x. We're going to start with Q is equal to minus Ka dt dx going along the root. So we said that the area is equal to pi r squared, but we know that the diameter is equal to A multiplied by x. So that is the diameter, so we can convert that to a radius, which would be ax on 2. That is the radius that we would then substitute into the area to work out the actual area as a function of x. So it will be pi, and I don't forget this r is squared, so it will be a x on 2 all squared, or pi a squared x squared on 4. If we substitute that into our Q equation, we have Q is equal to minus K A, which is now pi A squared X squared on 4 dt dx. So we're still in a linear direction from left to right. So we still have a dx term, but it's only the area that changes in a circular pattern, which we already taken into account with the area equation. What we do is then rearrange and solve like we do with any other equation with a dt dx. So rearranging, and sorry, my spelling is lose. I'm losing my spelling here. We will take, so we will leave rather the dt on the right hand side as a separable equation. We will take the dx on the left. For this one, I'll simply put everything else on the left hand side. So it's 4q divided by minus pi k a squared, x squared, and that is it. Yes, that is it. That's correct. So I'm just checking there. So what we want to then do is we want to integrate. So we want to integrate with respect to x and t. However, we've got an x squared here. So we need to keep that inside the integral. Integrating this, we're going to leave the left-hand side as 4q on, or the first part rather, at pi k a squared. We will then integrate 1 on x squared. So that becomes a minus 1 on x, and we are now integrating between an x1 and an unknown x, plus 1 on x1. So it's an integral between x1 and x, where the x is going to then on the right-hand side, the temperature rather, when we integrate it, becomes tx minus t1. Rearranging that, we can write it as tx on the left-hand side, take the minus t1 onto the other side, so it becomes a positive, and we still have a minus 4q divided by pi ka squared multiplied by the brackets of minus 1 on x plus 1 on x1. So that is now a function of, a, or a temperature profile rather, tx in terms of t's, q's, k's, and, x, x, and x1's. Look at temperature t2. We can substitute T2 into this equation as T2 being equal to T1 
minus 4q divided by pi ka squared, and just flipping the x's around, we'll have 1 on x1 minus 1 on x2. So that is now an equation in terms of t2. If we rearrange this equation at t2 such that we have q as the subject of the formula, we can write q as t1 minus t2 multiplied by pi k a squared divided by the 4 that we had from the 4q and now this would be multiplied by 1 on x1 minus 1 on x2. That is now solved q in terms of temperature 1 and temperature 2. So substituting this back into the equation for t x. So if we substitute that in for q, we will again have tx is equal to t1 minus, but we now have a q value, which is what we have above. So just rearranging this a bit to put some numbers a little bit more neatly, we will have 4, sorry, I'd forgotten that, there's a 4 before the q. So we have the 4 we then have the Q. So the Q becomes this entire section here in this blue. So it becomes 4 T1 minus T2 pi K A squared divided by 4 1 on X1 minus 1 on X2. That's all divided through. That Q was then divided by pi K a squared, which was then multiplied, the whole thing was multiplied by 1 on x1 minus 1 on x. If you look at some of these terms now, there's a 4 that will cancel with a 4, a pi, a pi, a k, a k, a squared, a squared, and a couple of others, and we can then rewrite temperature x. So temperature x is the temperature profile through this, will equal t1 minus t1 minus t2 multiplied by 1 on x1 minus 1 on x divided by 1 minus x1 minus 1 on x2. And that is the temperature profile that they've asked us for in A. Part B now asks, given the information, so we actually didn't need any of this information yet, all of these numbers down here, calculate the heat transfer rate through the cone. So the heat transfer rate is simply going to be Q. So what we found in our text here somewhere is we had a value for Q, and I will have the Neaton version up for, for you after this video, but you will find, please double check again, that your Q value will be equal to 21, sorry, 212 what is your final answer for B?